What's going on guys? This is Vince with vshred.com and in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to do the perfect sit-up. All right, like I said, today's video is going to be all about just how to do a sit-up, and this might seem very basic to some of you, but I see a lot of people doing the sit-up wrong. Um, it's the same thing when it comes to a similar motion, like a simple push-up. I made a video about how to do the perfect push-up and the steps to do that. I'll put a card to it up here if you wanna check out that video after, maybe. Um, but if you are currently doing sit-ups, and you think you're doing them right, I highly suggest just watching this through all the way to the end right now because it's just five steps that I'm gonna show you to make sure that you are doing it right so that you're getting the most out of your exercise. Because I see a lot of people going to the gym and doing a bunch of exercises but not getting the results you want. So making sure that you're doing it right is how you're going to get those results. And the same thing happens when it comes to uh, getting bigger arms, getting bigger a bigger back, getting uh, better abs, uh, whatever it might be, making sure you're doing it right and that's also why I made my body type quiz to help you understand what your body type is to make sure that you are doing the right training, make sure you are following the right macros and doing, following the right diet for your body type because once you do that, you get results so much faster. And if you wanna, if you wanna check that out, there's a link, I'll put a link to it right below this video. Um, just check out my, the quiz, watch the video at the end, and I'll show you what to do diet and training wise to get in shape. But getting into this video, like I said, this is gonna be about how to do a sit up. It's gonna be a quick video, five simple steps, and we're gonna make sure that you're doing your sit ups right and getting the most out of the exercise. So obviously here on a mat, um, and the first, the first step to this, and I'm gonna do this in order. The first step to this is that you want to lock your feet in place because I see a lot of people going and doing sit ups and they're down here and they don't have their feet locked in place and they're kind of, their feet are kind of lifting up off the ground and they're kind of fighting against um, their, their upper body and their lower body at the same time when really you just wanna be focused on lower body locked in place so that you can really focus on just crunching with your abs. So I have a pair of 35 pound dumbbells here and all you do is you put your feet right behind them, you roll them up onto your toe and now my feet are locked in place. Make sure the dumbbells are heavy enough to keep your body locked in place. Don't use like five or 10 pounds. Use something heavy enough to keep your body stationary. So from there, that's going to be the first step because now I can really just focus on exhausting my abs rather than trying to keep my lower body on the ground while I do a sit up. So now I can focus on what matters, which is that crunching motion. So after you have your feet locked into place, next you're gonna lock your upper body into place because this is another thing that I see done differently and there's no right way to do this. Um, but the one thing that you wanna watch out for is moving around or swinging as you do the crunch. So when you're doing a sit up, you can put your hands on your chest, you can put your hands behind your head, you can even put your hands on the ground. If you're gonna put your hands on the ground, I highly recommend making sure that you're not pushing as you do a sit up. So maybe just avoid this one if so. So you can go hands behind your, or on your chest I like behind the head because obviously when your arms are up more, it's going to put, it's gonna make it a little bit harder on your abs. So hands behind your head. And then the reason this is important is because you want to lock this into place. You do not want to start here and then throw your elbows forward to create a bunch of momentum every time. Don't do this because this is creating a lot of momentum, taking a lot of the effort away from the abs and just making the exercise less efficient. So keeping your hands behind your head, locking them there. And then as you sit up, your elbows, your hands, your neck, your head, nothing is really changing positions. You're keeping that locked into place throughout the entire movement. That way you can really just focus on your abs doing all the work. So that's step number two. Step number three, and now we're gonna be really getting into probably the best form tip that I've ever um, learned or given when it comes to any ab exercise. And this works, like I said, for any ab exercise, not just a sit up. And that is to exhale as you do the sit up. Because a lot of times people, they're going and doing crunches or reverse crunches or leg lifts or Russian twists, and they're not feeling the exercise in their abs like they should be. Well, a very easy way to fix that and create a better mind muscle connection, create a better contraction in your abs is to do something that automatically contracts your abs because every single time you exhale, you blow out air, you are contracting 
your abs. It is controlled by your abs. So right now, if you're sitting at a computer or watching this on your phone, if you simply go and blow out all the air from your lungs, I mean every last ounce of breath, you're going to feel a flex, a squeeze in your abs. And so when you do that while doing a sit up, it's going to make that mind muscle connection, make that contraction that much better. So feet locked into place, hands locked into place. And then with every sit up, I'm going to blow out air. So it's going to be a forceful exhale. You're not just kind of going and just doing a little blow. You're, you're blowing out as hard as you can here. That way you can really get that flex of your abs. So very simple yet very effective. That's tip number three. Tip number four is going to be a form tip when it comes to the top of the exercise. And so obviously when you're doing a crunch, what you're doing is you're going from here up to here. But the issue up here, so when you're at the top of the crunch or at the top of the sit up is you're resting at the top. And I see this done, I think more so on like a decline bench when people are doing a sit up on the decline because they come up and they kind of rest at the top because right now, yes, my abs are being worked a little bit, but I'm not really focusing on keeping that contraction in my abs or I'm sitting up too far to the point where I'm resting my abs now and I'm kind of cheating this half second, one second rest every single rep during the set. So instead of coming up and kind of sitting there for a second, what I want you to do is stop either right before that, right here to where your abs are still being worked. Or if you do want to come all the way up, I want you to focus on flexing your abs even at the top so that you don't lose that contraction so that you get the so that you have this constant tension on your abs at the top of the exercise. So that's going to be tip number 4. And the final tip, the last tip is going to be at the opposite end of the rep. So up here, you're focusing on not resting, you're focusing on not coming all the way up to where you're cheating that half second of lost tension. And then at the other side of the exercise, when you're coming down to the bottom, this is another, this is probably more common than people resting up here is that they come down and they take a second, they catch their breath and they go into the next crunch and they come down, they take a second and they lose that tension. There's a big difference between this and this. So at the bottom of the exercise, rather than coming down and letting your shoulders completely touch the ground and losing that tension in your abs, I want you to stop just before that to keep that tension throughout the entire exercise not only at the top, but also at the bottom. And your, your sit-up sets are going to become twice, maybe three times, four times, five times as hard as when you weren't doing this before. So a proper sit-up should be feet locked into place, upper body, hands locked into place. Make sure you are breathing out with every rep. Make sure you are not resting at the top. Make sure you're not resting at the bottom. So the next time that you're going to hit abs and you have sit-ups incorporated into your ab workout, make sure you're doing these five tips. And at first it might seem like it's becoming a little more difficult than it should be. But once you have this as just basically second nature and you're doing it automatically without even thinking about it, because every time I go to do sit-ups, my feet are locked into place one way or another. I'm not moving my upper body. I am breathing out with every single rep and I'm not resting at the top of the bottom. It's a lot of steps to remember at first, but it's going to get a lot easier and your ab workouts are going to become a lot better and they're gonna get you a lot better results and you're gonna have sore abs and your abs, your ab development is going to get to that next level by doing it correctly. So if you like these tips, make sure you're clicking that thumbs up button below, subscribing to the channel if you're not yet subscribed to get a lot of viewers who just watch the videos and they're missing out on a lot of other content that I pump out just because they're not getting notifications because they're not subscribed to the channel. So smash that subscribe button. Other than that, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one.